All right, keep Wellington or move to an ETF? Um, Richard writes in, longtime fan, have purchased and read all your books. Good for you, kind sir. Everyone should. Everyone should. Um, I have several CDs that matured in November of this uh, 2020. So I had 60000 to put somewhere, and the CD rates are basically zero. I know, man. It's nuts. After watching your videos and reading you re your Retire with Wellington book, I put the money in a taxable account. I got pretty good returns under just over 60 days, a lot better than a CD, to put it mildly. Mm, you shouldn't really make that comparison, but I get where he's going. However, then I got my dividend and capital gains and realized the tax implication might have been more than I expected. Well, he still made more than the CDs, and a dividend and capital gain were long-term and qualified dividends, so should still have only been taxed at 15%, so a, a, a significantly better than the CD raise. But again, we don't really want to compare an FDIC product to an investment product. Um, I remember one of your videos, you noted that Wellington in a taxable account was not a big concern. I don't know if it's not a big concern, but it is a concern I mean, because it yields income, that's for sure. Uh, this might be different for me because he has a, a just gross income. He's married, but an AGI of 200000 I won't be touching this money for 24 to 36 months, so it's basically my extra month the money. I'll probably dip in and spend over a five to seven year period. I do not need any of these funds to get by month to month and is not being utilized as a long-term investment vehicle. Why? Huh. Keep in mind, I'm just trying to get a modest return like a CD would give me, say, two and a half to three and a half percent. That's it. And those days are... <laughs> I would expect to pay taxes on the income as done for my years uh, about at a 28% rate. Uh, I'm just trying to determine if I should move it to the Wellington Fund or ETS in my taxable account. Um, I'm not sure how critical this tax concern is where I'm just splitting hairs. Well, it's, yeah, it's a tax. I mean, it's a tax concern, but, you know, don't look a, gore, a gift house in the face. What is it? Don't, don't look a gift house, in, a gift horse in the face. Don't look at a gift horse in the face. And if you got 2.8% and you had to pay uh, long-term capital gain and dividend tax on some distribution on 60,000 bucks, that's, that's nothing. But at the end of the day, you know, see five to seven years, that's still an intermediate time of investing. Um, you know, if you're comfortable, I, I, if you're comfortable with, it's weird to be, so you don't want to pay the, you're not, it's odd to me. You're not, you're okay with paying the interest income at ordinary income rates, but you're hesitant to pay the long-term capital gain and qualified dividend rates. That, that just seems, that seems nonsensical to me. Don't take this wrong, Rich, Richard, but uh, the, the interest income is taxes OI which is always higher than long-term capital gains and, or, and qualified dividends. Um, I don't get the reasoning there. Um, so Wellesley, I mean, Wellesley might be an alternative, but that's not, I mean, again, Wellesley is a security, it's an investment. It's not an FDIC insured product. You know, if you got five to seven years, you know, I mean, would that be okay? I would think, I don't know your circumstance. You're making pretty good money. I don't, I'm not sure why we're not investing this for the long term and looking at spending down uh, tax deferred assets actually. So I'm not sure the whole situation here, but if you're not getting, if you want a CD like investment without taking, you're not going to get CD like investments and make any money today. It's just not happening. Um, you know, you're not, I can't tell if you're on social security, maybe municipal bonds. I don't know. It just seems to me, I, you know, Ginny May is paying about one. Um, that's the ordinary income, of course. Wellesley is, you know, some ordinary, a lot of ordinary income because of bond interest, but then they got, you know, some long-term capital gain and, and, and a lot of, well, not a lot, but some qualified dividends, but five to seven years, that's a middle, you know, that's an intermediate investment. I don't think any, any financial advisor would say Wellesley for a five to seven year time frame is over the top risk, but it's going to be riskier. I mean, don't forget Wellesley was down what, 15% from October, 2007, uh, to March of 2009. So anyway, that would probably be what I'd look at. But, I, you know, without knowing the whole story of your circumstance, I'm not quite sure why we're wanting to spend the taxable money down and leave our deferred accounts. That's, uh, I, would, I would maybe reconsider that. Hey, anyway, hope this helps. Thanks now.